Well, praise the Lord. Y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord? We just stand and have a word of prayer. If you could find, uh, I'm just going to read Psalms 96, just verse 1. Psalms 96, verse 1. It says, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. Asking that you would bless and anoint this service, Father, in a special way. May you just help us, dear God, to get ourselves out of the way, Lord. Father, like that seed that's planted in the ground and it dries up and the shell cracks, Lord. May we be able to receive the water of your word tonight, Father. Lord, just help us to lift our hands up into the sun shine and receive from you, Father, whatever you have for each one of us. It's a privilege to be able to come into your house, and sing songs of praise to our God and our King. You're the lover of our soul and the giver of life. You're the giver of all good things, Lord. And we love you and we thank you and we appreciate all you do for us. We just pray you'd bless the service now. Be with each one in this building, Lord. Bless those that are traveling here and bless those that are out on the internet. May their heart strings be touched, Lord. May you bless the word tonight as it comes forth. Just help us now, Lord, as we sing these songs back to you. Lord God, may you just touch us now. Be with us in a special way. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask. Amen. Sweep over my soul. Sweep over. Sweep over 
blessed be your name, Lord. It's a key of F. Just, yeah, the words of that song, he knows my name. And I have a maker. He formed my heart. Before even time began, my life is in His hand. He knows my name. He knows my
Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Well, Luther, if you'd come on up and pray over the tithes and the offerings. Got a few birthday announcements. Uh, Brother Jonathan Watkins' birthday is on February the 12th. So wish him a happy birthday if you see him. And on uh, February 13th, Brother Caleb Buckman's birthday. And no, I didn't skip over yours, brother. Everybody make sure <laughs> that you wish Brother Luther a, uh, a happy birthday because tomorrow is his birthday. And he's, oh, he's, he needs to be wished a happy birthday. Yes, you do have a twin. I apologize. Brother Joshua, I know he'll forgive me. He loves me. Come on up, brother. Praise the Lord. 60 tomorrow. Amen. If you have a request upon your heart, let's just lift it up to the Lord. Amen. Thank God for my help. Let's pray. Father, I love you. Lord, I'm just so thankful for the works that you do in my life, the lives of those that are here, those that are streaming, Father. Lord, I'm just so, so happy, so thankful for your joy and peace, Father, that you know my name, you haven't forgotten me. Neither have you forgotten any of these here, Father. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you for your word, for my brothers and sisters, Father, for the ministry. I pray that you magnify and bless it to your people this evening. And Lord, as we collect the tithes and offerings, Father, I pray that you would bless the cheerful giver, magnify it to your kingdom, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you've done. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We have a special tonight. While he gets ready for that, I just want to announce that, um, I don't know if y'all knew this, but uh, Brother Caleb and Sister Joy had bought a house and they have a new house. It's new to them. Uh, it's not recently new, but... I've been twisting his arm, trying to get him to, to do a youth meeting, to open up his home. And so on Saturday, the 20th uh, of this month, at 5.30 p.m., uh, an announcement was already sent out. There's going to be a youth meeting. So for those of you that want to go, please come. And for those of you that aren't youth, please pray. So I believe the Lord can touch the hearts of, of the people and... Uh, I'm just kind of excited about it and continue to pray for Caleb. I don't know if you all know this or not, but he's going through paramedic training right now. And to become a paramedic is essentially you set aside a year of your life and he's still doing firefighting and all these other things. So uh, Joy doesn't get to see him much. And when I see him, he's always tired. So just pray for him. I'd appreciate it if you do that. When he told you you're not good enough When he told you you're not right When he told you you're not strong enough To put up a good fight When he told you you're not worthy When he told you you're not loved When he told you you're not beautiful That you'll never be enough a liar he will take your breath stop you in your steps fear he is a liar he will take your rest steal your happiness 
cast your fear in the fire cause fear he is a liar You'll forever be alone When he told you you should run away You'll never find a home When he told you you were dirty And you should be ashamed When he told you you could be the one That grace could never change Oh, fear, he is a liar he will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. He will rob your rest, steal your happiness. So cast your fear in the fire, cause fear. He is a liar. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I fear. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Oh, let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. for the word tonight you love the Lord God is good isn't he Amen. man he just he's so good he loves us so much y'all pray for us I'm trying to brother Josh and I are trying to put a song together we we're going to do a, a special for his mom so if y'all know this just worship with us the lost are saved, they find their way at the sound of 
your great name and all can feel no shame at the sound of your great name and every fear it has
you. Is his name great? Amen. If you want to turn your eyes upon Jesus, amen. Can we just stand? Are y'all ready for the word tonight? Key of F says, to the word this evening I had a thought that came to me very early this morning and just want to look to the Lord to see how many have a need Amen. I have great needs in my life and I know that that the Lord is here to answer them all amen um, why don't you go ahead brother Travis and give me that image This is a curious image. It's a very nice image. Whoever did it did a very nice job. This is the title of my sermon tonight. Now, I got this just to give you a little insight. 
I, I woke up very early this morning, probably a little after four o'clock, and just immediately began praying, asking the Lord. You know, um, I had material, but I never get, I never know for sure if that's the material he wants me to use. And so I just, I'm always looking to say, Lord, I don't mind last minute changes. And I just prayed there for a little while and just talked to the Lord about the service tonight, about this service. I knew, you know, we'd have some people here and you'd have needs like me. Amen. Amen. And I just always remind the Lord of that, that Lord, these are your people and they have needs and I know that you'll meet them. And I drifted back off to sleep and I don't know, somewhere some, I forget, maybe sometime after six, I woke again and immediately started praying again. Lord, it's Wednesday. There's going to be people to gather. In a little more than, a little more than 12 or 13 hours from now, your family's going to come and gather in a building and we're going to look to you. Yeah. And you just let us talk to the Lord. I don't know how you pray, but I talk to him like I'm talking to you. He's my friend. Amen. I have a very personal relationship with him. And I just laid there and just prayed a little while and just prayed just specifically about this service. And I said, of course, Lord, you know, in my notes, there's several different things I've been looking at and could carry on very easily with any one of them. And I, you know, I must have drifted back off just laying there praying. And I think sometime then after seven, which now by now is really late for me to sleep. And sometime after seven o'clock, I just came bolt awake and the Lord began to speak to my heart immediately <laughs> he said I want you to go to church and I want you to tell the people the king is coming Amen. and it, it broke before me as an image and I, I don't know if I was still in that I'm not a prophet I don't see visions but I don't know if I was in that twilight between wake fully getting awake I know I, I said I woke bolt awake but this was happening as I was coming bolt awake and I heard that and I saw that image and I saw myself excited <laughs> and I was running to tell everybody the king is coming Amen. and I, I started after I got awake and I got my bearings I said Lord that's a wonderful sermon what, you're going to have to build it for me because it's brand new that's all I got the king is coming and so, you know, I realized that to get to that place, friends, the world is not a, a very peaceful place. The war, Paul talks about how that we fight not against flesh and blood, amen, but against principalities, powers in high, wickedness in high places, powers amen. of darkness. Now, you need to understand that that, that battle, that's the same battle in Revelation 12 where Lucifer fought against Michael. And that started before Genesis. That started back in the eternities. That battle's been raging all, all the while. It, 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 it fell down into the earth. You know what happened in the garden? And that battle's been raging and God's family's been fighting it. And Paul was saying, hey, we're still fighting it. And Revelation 12 shows that it's going to finally come to an end. And But here we are fighting it. And I want to tell you something, friends. Fight with confidence. Because the king is coming. Oh, yeah. Amen. And so I, I, I kept thinking about this all morning. we got to fight. There's a battle. It's raging. And, I, and that's the way the Lord led me. And I, I jumped on checking. Pardon this little testimony, but you know, I'm taking all this time. But I just want to put you, put you in the vision with me. And I was just making sure, checking messages that came in through the night, any prayer request. I was catching up, getting ready for the Bible study this morning, catching the last part of Brother J.D.'s morning study. That's really good. I, if you all want a, a good Bible study, to, you come on at 7, hey, J.D., 7.30. So you get to sleep an extra half an hour and catch a Bible study. And then, uh, and then right from there, I jumped straight, had just a quick a little bit of time and jumped into the uh, morning lesson there with those brothers from different, I say the West Coast, it's actually going everywhere now. It's all kind of all over up in Canada and everywhere. But as I was thinking about all that, 
And so I'm looking for prayer requests, looking for any, who's the teacher, is it me, who is it? And I, I, I checked, which I rarely check. I tell people all the time, don't send me stuff on Facebook Messenger because I might check it once, maybe once a month. Um, I'm on WhatsApp or you can hit me up SMS, but I rarely see Facebook Messenger stuff. But I, I just for some reason checked it. And my sister, Sister Lisa, had posted this on our website. And when I saw that, I went, pow! Perfect! And I thought, I'm going to take that image and I'm just going to show it to the church. And tonight, I want to speak to you from, on a battle plan. I hope you got one. Amen. You're going to need one. Yes. Amen? Right. You believe it? Yes. So we're going to hit 1 Thessalonians 5. We're going to hit Ephesians 6. So... Open your Bibles. I want them just to leave that there rather than turning to you, rather than putting it on the screen. Let's just open our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And, you know, this is, for, for me, 1 Thessalonians is a scripture that, that actually means quite a bit to me, especially this uh, fifth chapter. Uh, and for the reason is, is that this was one of the very first sermons I ever took in my ministry nearly 30 years ago when, it, when, it, uh, as a, when I evolved to a pulpit ministry. And I love this passage. I would love to start at verse 1. Um, and I, and, and let's, just, let's just do that. Let's start at verse 1. And I'm going to skip a, a little bit of it. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's look at verse, um, verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Amen. Pray without ceasing. I just want you to think about that. Pray without ceasing. Do you know there are people, there are certain uh, sects of religion. There, there's a sect in the, uh, I forget now, it seemed like it's somewhere in Europe. And I saw a documentary on it. And it's, it's a, a movement where uh, they literally move their lips all day long. They take that literally. And they, they're, they're never not praying. And... You know, I, I thought and I, I saw it and I thought, well, I don't, I don't really think that's required of us. But you know something? In the day and hour that you and I live in, part of your battle plan needs to be heavy doses of prayer. Amen. It's never been. It, 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 is, and it, it is an essential business yeah. is prayer. If there was ever a, 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 a something essential, it ought to be prayer. It's more important, Brother Branham said, you, you know, you can study too much. You can read too much. But you never can pray too much. Prayer is the greatest weapon. Love is the strongest force and prayer is the greatest weapon. And I have found in my experience over the years that very often times people get into jams and it never occurs to them to pray. And they run to every expert and every person to try to get some help. And, and sometimes I find that God has to strip you down to, to, to just take every other option away from you until he gets you down to your last best option that should have been your first option, prayer. Sometimes he strips us down to our last best weapon. And I, I think that it is so undervalued. Now... Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Turn there with me. Ephesians 6, and we'll read 11, 12, and 13.
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Amen? Do you believe that? Amen. Uh, against powers, mm -hmm. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. I mean, it sounds like we are really outnumbered. Mm -hmm. right. I want you to look at this. This is you. Here's what's arrayed against you. All right? Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Wherefore, or because of that, or now that you know all that, here's some good advice. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now, if language means anything, I can say if you don't take the whole armor, you won't stand. Amen. You will get taken down. It requires the whole armor that you may stand. All right, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Then 14 goes, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. It goes on down about talking about the whole body armor. And, and it's amazing. I've always heard it since I was a kid. I've heard preachers say, there's no armor here for your back. So don't run. <laughs> Whatever you do, you'll take an arrow from behind. Don't run. You've got armor. You've got a shield. You've got a sword. Use it. All right? So if you don't, if you, if you don't do that, if you fail to have a battle plan, there's a saying uh, 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 that, that talks about how that those who fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Yeah. Uh, those, who prepare, those who fail to prepare, uh, uh, now I've got it all messed up. Does anybody, those who fail to prepare. Say it again, Deb. If you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Amen. Let's pray. Master, we thank you for your love and your kindness to us. I stand here, Lord, and I, my heart is just, just full, Lord, to think on this thought throughout the entire day. Lord, I've just pondered it and pondered it and pondered it. And I, I feel such, a, such an excitement in my heart to give this announcement to the people tonight. Don't fear. The king is coming. Lord, we have a battle plan. We, we have a plan. Satan is turned loose upon the world like a roaring lion going about. But Father, we have a plan. We're prepared. We have been prepared for this day that we are living in for quite a while now, Lord. And I believe, it is my belief in my heart that, Lord, it's all been by design. We would have desired to see, Lord, the catching away of the church decades ago, decades ago. But Father, I know that you have had all things under your perfect control and you are clicking along without any. There's no reservation in you, Lord. There's no shadow of turning in you. Father, it's, 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 it now must be a word that comes into the bride because we realize this thing can't just keep going. It can't just keep going, Lord. We've come to that time, I believe, as we said to the church last weekend, we are those upon whom the ends of the world have come. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, I've, uh, I've prepared. The people have sang worship, and there's been songs. People have come out. Now, that's humanly. That's all we can do. Now, Father, it's going to be up to you. And, of course, the enemy will try to hinder it every way he can. But, Father, we're looking to the unseen now. I put my faith and confidence in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends. You can be seated. Now, I want you to just leave that up, brother. Just leave, leave that image up for me. You know, the scripture has a number of prophecies regarding the end time that are very unique. 
Uh, I, I'm not going to turn to them all tonight. In fact, as I doubt that I'll turn to any other scriptures because I want to leave that up and I want to move quickly. I, I decided not to use a PowerPoint for that very reason. But, but we've, we're going to find out, friends, that, that when the Bible talks about, for instance, Jesus will talk about, and it's very familiar to us, where when the fig tree puts forth its bud. And, and we know, of course, that that is... Uh, more, than a, more than a half a century ago. Well more. It's probably 70, uh, probably 70, I think it was 70 years in 2018. And so now here we are moving 70 plus years into the fulfillment of that scripture. And to me, you know, you say, wow, I thought that generation wasn't to pass and, until all things be, fu- be finished and be fulfilled. But we also have to remember that, it's, it, that Jesus also said, and all of these things, and Brother Branham emphasized that. I think I mentioned that too Sunday. That Jesus, that Brother Branham talks about that it's not just the fig tree, but when all of these other things Amen. begin to come forth and put forth their leaf. Uh, put, uh, when all these other things begin to be, come into fulfillment. Now, when you read, if you're just a... Uh, a prophecy reader. And there's people who just do nothing but study prophecy. I'm glad that when I study prophecy, I have an answer in the Word of God because it's very foreboding. And when you read the things that are to come on the world, I mean, doom and gloom is almost an understatement. You're like, wow, I mean, how is anybody going to be able to stand? What are the believers going to do when these kinds of things begin to fall upon the earth? And it's a fair question. You know, it's, uh, it's something to consider. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, and I, and I want to make this point before I get too deep into my notes. It is valid, and it is noteworthy, and you should have confidence in the fact that you are predestinated not to fail. That you, are, that you have a gene of God, and that according to the prophecy of Jesus... There is no way to deceive that last day bride. He's already promised himself you. All right? And so, you know, you're you're going to find, Brother Branham's going to make some statements. And I I was surprised when when I read the statements in Warrior David. It's 1955. And Brother Branham is making such a case for election that even, even I was stunned. I thought, wow. This is 1955. This is, this is a decade away from Brother Branham even using the term a gene of God. Amen. But yet when he, when he begins to speak about these quotes, let me, let me read you just a couple of statements that he says here. So in, in the message, the great warrior David. So he says, now we know it's, it's God's will to save the lost. That's easy. All right, we know it's God's will to heal the sick. Now watch. Now if we can positionally place ourselves in His will, then it's over. He's about to pray for sick people, and he's simply trying to get them to understand. He's trying to build up their faith and trying to get them to think correctly about the Word of God. And in order for that to happen, the people are going to have to place some confidence not in their flesh. But in the fact that Christ, through election and by the new birth, places you positionally in Christ. And so it's it's almost as if to say, it's really not on you, it's on him. All you have to do is begin to confess that and to believe it and walk in it. Allow this word. I'm here to tell you something, friends. There is nothing more valuable in your life than allowing the word to be the Lord and master. Because the word of God knows every need you you have or will ever have, and it already has the answer. Watch what he says. He goes on now. Here he says, so last night, he said we were speaking of how that gifts and callings are without repentance. It's God's election and foreknowledge is what makes the thing so. If we have a desire, the Bible says, 
It's not him that willeth or him that runneth, but it's God that showeth mercy. See, it's not whether you will or whether you won't or where your desire is. It's, it's whether it's God's will or not. All right? Watch. Or when, see, so, so he says, so he says, foreknowledge is what makes the thing so. If we have a desire, the Bible said, it's not him that willeth or him that runneth. It's God that showeth mercy. It's not whether you will. There it is. It's not whether you will or whether you want to. Amen? Amen? It's not whether you will or whether you even want to or where your desire is. It's whether it's God's will or not. See? Then we have to find out God's will. And if it's that perfect, we can just set our faith to that and say, that's it. And we can run right all the way the will of God runs. So you you realize here tonight, I want to encourage you with something, friends. I know the world is falling apart. I know you're, there is a, a great army arrayed against you. I know the world is burning down. I get it. Disease, judgment, plague, coming, pre-tribulation uh, things happening in the earth. We've been talking quite a bit about it. And there's never been a time where God's bride was facing more attack mentally, emotionally, spiritually, But I'm here to tell you something, friends. You're held up not even by your own choice or by your own will or by your own grit. You're held up because he chose you in him before the foundation of the world. So he goes on now. Watch. So it's whether God's will or not. All right? Now, he says, how many Christians here? Raise up your hand. And I think we'd, we'd uh, in this building tonight, we'd all put our hands up. All right? Amen. So how many Christians in here? Raise up your hand. All right? You ready for this? You got a seatbelt on? You're not a Christian by your desire. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You're a Christian by God's desire. <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, I just see the devil getting hit between the eyes. Pow! No man can come to me except my father draws him. You was elected. This is 1955. You was elected by God before the foundation of the world to be a Christian. That's why you're a Christian. That's why I made a choice. You were born to make that choice. I have a desire. That's actually God's desire. Hallelujah. And it's beginning to operate. It feels like your desire. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, praise God. Now, I want you to catch the point. Brother Branham is not just trying to preach a pep rally. That, I mean, that's pep rally material. Amen. That's not what his aim is. He's trying to get the people in this audience where he's preaching this sermon, he's trying to get them to understand, look, if that's all true, then you ought to have the, the greatest amount of confidence in the world. Why would you then not believe God for whatever your need is? Whatever you're facing, whatever your battle is right now, and you might be facing multiple battles on multiple fronts, and I'm here to tell you, as soon as one of those battles is over, there's another one waiting behind it. So why don't you just go ahead and make up your mind now? Well, God's in control, and I'm going to keep going forward. Because I'm not even a Christian because I decided to be. I'm a Christian because he decided to be. Well, if that's true, then how would he not help me win the battle? You get the picture. All right. So he says here, and he says, you know, that people, you know, you're you're not a Christian by your desire. You're a Christian by God's desire. No man can come except my father draws him first. You was elected by God before the foundation of the world to be a Christian. That's scripture. Jesus said, no man can come except my father calls him first. You was elected, called. Then when God elected you, he called you, and you heeded to his call. Then he poured the anointing oil on you, the Holy Ghost, when the cruise of oil. He says now, and he, he, he goes back to David being anointed by Samuel. And I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I want to just give you this foundation. And he goes back to where 
David is being anointed and the anointing oil being poured on him, Brother Branham shows that it's an Old Testament type of you receiving the Holy Ghost. All right? And then here in 1955, he's been preaching all these years and he makes that statement. And he says, when he poured, he says, what does the oil represent in the Bible? Holy Spirit. When he poured the oil upon him, he baptized him with the Holy Spirit in symbol form. And Brother Branham says, amen, I hope you get that. That just come fresh. (laughs) Now, not that the oil was the Holy Ghost. Brother Branham always knew that. And Brother Branham always knew it would take the Holy Ghost. But this is the first time he goes back in the life of David. And he says, wow, I never caught that before. That just come fresh. When David got the anointing oil poured upon him, I'm here to tell you something, friends. Brother Branham is going to go on in this quote to say, at that moment, David was king. And he's a scrubby boy. Brother Branham called him a scrub. (laughs) Had all these big, you know, Jesse's got all these, you know, sons. Here's all these big strapping you know, warrior, these guys are all in the army and, and David's just a little, little scrub out there and tending the father's sheep. And as soon as he gets the Holy Ghost, he's king. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and so when, when you realize, friends, that to me this is so beautiful because w- once you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're, you're, you're already in position to defeat any devil. Any time, any place, under any condition. You don't have to grow into that. You don't have to come way on down the road and eventually after a few years, I'll be able to live like a Christian. Nonsense. You're already a king when the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You already have authority. See, he says not sparingly. He poured it, it went all over him. A whole hornful. That's the way God pours the Holy Ghost on a man. Not sparingly, just baptizes him into it, anointing him with the Spirit. Notice, here it is, right then. When that anointing struck him, he was positionally placed as king. Now, you're positionally placed as his bride. That's what the token has done in this hour. I'm here to tell you something, friends. The reason the king is coming is because there's a bride to receive him. Hallelujah. And that is what the devil is fighting. The devil can't stop the king. He's already taken a beating from the king. But he's after the bride. He's trying to stop his bride. But he can't stop her because a bride has been prepared for this hour. Like Esther, you've been prepared. You've been brought on the scene. I don't know why you weren't here a hundred years ago. I don't know, you know, why, why this happened in your life. But I know this. You're a believer because he decided you were. Hallelujah, you've got faith because it's his faith. And it does not matter. I'm here to tell you, it does not matter what you're facing. The devil can't stop you if you accept that you are now positionally placed in Christ as the bride with full authority. Glory. Amen. Amen. Soon as that anointing oil struck him, He was positionally placed as a king. Amen. You are positionally in Christ Jesus as kings and priests. The moment you receive the Holy Spirit, God places you in the kingdom and heir. What a beautiful picture. There you are. It's amazing. He says, here's David in this battle. And it's an interesting thing when you think about the battle of David, because you know he's he hears this giant. Brother Ram said that that giant was making his boast, but on that day he probably should have shut up because David come into the camp. Yeah. Amen. And until an anointed, positionally placed child shows up, the devil can say whatever he wants. Amen. This is why you see the the things that he does because positionally placed sons and daughters of God are are rare in the earth. And so you, you have the devils in control of the government. Why Say, why do they do such evil things? <laughs> really? Say, you know, in, in the halls of education, why do they teach such, such things contrary to the scripture? You really have to ask that? Why do we see the fabric of society so vile, so polluted? 
You know, well, what are they feeding on? See? And so, so we find, but, but once a, I'm going to tell you something, friends. You should walk around every day realizing that you are a duly authorized agent of Almighty God. And I don't care what situation you walk into and how many non-positionally placed people are there. With all of their filth and all of their doubt, you're a different person. As Paul said, you're not of the darkness, you're of the light. You're a child of the light. You're not of the night, you're of the day. Paul is drawing a, a, a line of demarcation between them and says, you're not them and they're not you. Right. Amen. Understand? And so, so when we go forward, you, you know, you, we have to have this attitude. And I'm here to tell you, you're going to need it in this hour. And you're not going to successfully deploy it without a big prayer life. And a confession that you believe the word of God and laying in the word and stop feeding on all everything from the world. Otherwise, you'll be uh, anemic and poisoned and weak and you won't have no effective power. You might be a child of God, but you won't have any effective power because you're not prayed up. You're, 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 you're contaminated with too much of the world. And that's where I read to you, I think it was Sunday, where Paul said you're going to have to be careful about being overcharged with the things of the world. At the last days, don't be a glutton of Laodicea. We live here, but we, we live here as, you know, as, 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 not as I'm from here. I'm not from here. I do live here, but I'm not from here. This world is not my home. And we find that once David showed up, now it's a different story. Because now you have in symbol, in type, a man who has the oil poured on him who is anointed by God, who's called and elected to this position. And you've, and you've, now, the king is in a tent hiding. Amen. But the real king is out there going, why don't we go kill him? Right. And the, real, the, 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 the national king is in there. He don't have his armor on. He's not planning to fight at all. When David's ready to go fight, he says, okay, well, let me put my armor on you. He doesn't have it on himself. And, and, you know, when David says, you know, I haven't proved this. Brother Bradham said, you know, a theological degree doesn't work for a, a real servant of God. Amen. I can't use creeds to fight him. I, this armor, I, I haven't proved these things. You know, let me go in the way that I know to go. Well, how was it that you went? I, I, I recognize, but Brother Branham tells it so in such, in such great detail how that when David was out there and that lion grabbed a one of the sheep of his father. And Brother Branham says, I mean, it wasn't like David was like, dun da 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 boy, is he going to pay. David was actually afraid like you and I would be. And he had to pray. And Brother Branham said, here was his prayer. Lord, that's my father's sheep. And I've been, I've been put in this position to protect that sheep. And you're going to have to help me, Lord, because I'm going after him. He had no ability to do it himself, but he was trusting on his position that the Father had placed him in. And he knew if he did that, then a supernatural God would have to come on the scene and a lion would get killed by a scrubby boy. Yeah. Amen. Bear the same way. And fortunately, you know, when he, when he says to, uh, to, to Saul, let me go in the way that I know. And... You know, fortunately, there was still enough in that backslid preacher. You know, Saul prophesied with the prophets, but he's a backslid preacher. Yeah. And fortunately, there was just enough gumption left in him uh, to let David do it. Now, it's interesting. I want you to think about this for a minute. Because you've got a number of categories here. You've got the king who's saying, you can't do it. You've got the army of Israel cowering back. Right. Amen? Amen? You've got a giant saying, saying, here's what I'm going to do to you and giving him all of these bad prophecies. I'm going to feed you to the fowls of the air. You've got David's own family. David's own family. This, when I thought about this, it blew my mind. Here's his own family, his brothers, who saw him get anointed. 
by a vindicated prophet. They saw Samuel. They were standing there. And they saw Samuel, thus saith the Lord, this is God's king. And even his own brothers who were who were in the meetings and saw the miracles, amen, who walked and saw the supernatural and could not deny it, and, 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 and you know, family members as it were, because, uh, because, you know, Brother Branham said, they're my brothers, and because they claim the name of Jesus, and I claim it, and, you know, and even, even, even Trinitarians and one, as he said, they're my brothers, we're one. And here you've got all of his brothers who saw the anointing, knew it on him, Knew it was thus saith the Lord. Could not deny it. They, they, there's no way to undo what they were standing there witnessing. And yet here they are saying, oh, they even are starting to question his motives. Amen. Even starting to question his character. <laughs> I know why you're here. You're acting like you're a Christian, but I know that's not why you're here. You know, you're a mischievous kid and you're just a punk and you're just trying to, you know, stir up some trouble And here is David standing there like Christ, perfectly, completely innocent of that. He he only had one motive. And you know what his motive was not to go face a giant. His motive was to defend the honor of God. David, it wasn't like that David felt like Ultraman. David said, look, the, the, the name of Jehovah's in question here. I can't let the name of Jehovah be questioned. And, and Brother Branham talks about that. He says, you know, e- even if I go down in defeat, then I would still, I'd still rather go down. I'd still rather get defeated trying to defend the honor of the Lord. It's just like the, like the three Hebrew children told the king, said, well, we don't know whether he'll deliver us or not. We know he can. But, here's, but that's, that's a moot point, your majesty. We, we don't know if he will. We know he can. We don't know if he will, but that has nothing to do with it. We're here to tell you that we're not going to defile the name of our Lord by worshiping an idol. Do what you want to do. Wow. We're not doing it. Amen. And they had no idea the furnace is going to be hit seven times hotter. They had no idea it's going to get so hot even their captors are going to get fried, putting them in there. They had no idea a fourth man was coming in the fire, but the fourth man was already waiting on them. They had to be willing by faith, by a commitment, not, not faith that we're, we're going to get delivered, but a committal that we're not going to bow. And it doesn't, the the consequences are of of no concern to me. I'm not worried about how this turns out. I don't worry, will I live or die or will I sink or swim? I'm here to defend the honor of the name of the word of God. And I'm going to stand on it and then it's up to God, friends. You understand, when you you face a devil in that kind of frame of mind, the devil don't know what to do with you. Because it wouldn't do him any good to threaten you. It doesn't matter. It won't do him any good to bring symptoms on you. You don't care. You don't care. I'm here. I'm going to claim the word of God. Well, but you got this problem. It doesn't matter. That has nothing to do with the promise. I'm going to claim the word of God and I'm going to stand on it. Will he heal you? I don't know. It doesn't matter. If he takes me, I'll be healed. If he leaves me, then he'll heal me. One way or the other, I'm going to get healed. And so we find then that We have to identify ourselves. It's important. Now, I want you to think for a minute. Which crowd do you belong to? The family, the army, the king, Goliath, the Philistines, their king, their army. You know what's amazing? You say, Brother Jason, sometimes I just feel so alone and outnumbered. There was one human... In two national armies facing off, two multi ten thousand, multi tens of thousands army squaring off, and kings on both sides, and there was one human being on in all of that who was willing to say, I will defend the name of God. Amen. I want to tell you something, friends. I have made up my mind. If the whole world won't serve him, I'm going to. If the whole world rejects him, I'm going to accept him. 
And if I have to walk alone, Brother Branham said, if I have to uh, lay, lay on my belly and, and drink branch water and eat soda crackers, he said, I'm, it doesn't matter what I, they said, well, Brother Billy, you preach to a, to, a, to, a, to a post. You're preaching like that. He said, then I'll preach to the post. Amen. I'm here to tell you something, friends. We're not looking for numbers. We're not looking for popularity. And God hasn't called you to success. God has called you to be faithful. Not necessarily successful. The devil would like to put you on that treadmill. But success isn't measured. That's not how God measures success. I'm successful because he chose me. He desired me. He called me. Hallelujah. He elected me. He has anointed me. And I'm going forward. Uh, The king is coming. And he's going to have a queen here to receive him. He's going to have a bride. And I made up my mind. I'm in them. I'm one of them. I'm part of that number. I have a battle plan today. What's your battle plan? To believe every word. What's your battle plan? To pray without ceasing. What's your battle plan? I'm going to put on the whole armor of God. Because I know this ain't no joke. This ain't Disneyland or fairy tale. This is real war. And there's armies arrayed against me. And I'm outnumbered. I'm outgunned. I might only have a slingshot. I might only have a slingshot. But I'm going to fire missiles at that enemy and say, you're going to hit him between the eyes? That's pretty hard to do. David couldn't do that. Brother Ram said when David hurled that stone and he said that stone took off and he said the Holy Spirit caught that stone in midair and guided it right, (laughs) caught him right between the eyes. I want to tell you something, friends. If you want to hit a bullseye on the devil, ask the Lord to guide it. Don't try to do it in your own power. It's not about my own power. It's not about how great I am. It's about how great he is. You believe it? Amen. We find that, you know, the, the Brother Branham had, I, I read this quote to you last time about how that, you know, God is going to bring forth a bride tree, which is the tree of life restored back to him as husband and wife in the Garden of Eden. How's he going to do it? By the same word and the same God made manifest in husband and wife. Catch it. The same God made manifest in husband and wife. The same God, the same single being is going to manifest himself in Christ the word and in the bride. Amen? Amen. So do you realize that that equates you, that, that equates you to this? That's why Brother Brandon would say, put this on your lips and it's the same as deity speaking. Amen. That's right. See? Which is a more powerful version of the Bible? This ink on paper put together and glued and stapled by a, a, a publisher? Or this word living behind skin? Amen. Brother Ram said when the books are closed for the last time, the word will be flesh. Amen. That's what the devil's afraid of. Amen. That's what the devil's afraid of. He's not afraid of ink on paper. There's life in this book. We don't disregard our Bibles. We love our Bibles. And, and it takes faith in these words, in this ink on paper. It takes faith to activate it, to make it work. But when it comes to working, it's looking to work behind skin. That, that's always been God's desire is to have his word. That was the, Adam didn't have a Bible. Amen. You understand? Adam didn't have a Bible. Adam didn't control nature by saying, in the name of Jesus, when stop. Amen. You understand, Jesus is his name in redemption because there's a fall and he's going to redeem a family. But, but the whole plan of God is God was going to have an economy of faith, a kingdom of faith, a kingdom of children who would not just quote his word, who would not just mentally agree with his word, but who would be living manifestations of his word. The Word made flesh has always been God's plan. In sacrifices and offerings thou hast had no pleasure, but a body hast thou prepared me. Jesus didn't even carry a Bible. I'm just making a point. You understand, I'm not not subtracting. This 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 is our book. And this is the book, faith in, the, in this book, Backs Down Devils. But you understand that, that eventually the books will be closed. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
I want to know that, that my whole life is one, one complete unified person who has complete faith, perfect faith to take any challenge of the devil. You say, oh, oh my, the world's been going on, the world's been going on. You know, it's interesting because in the early days of the church and they, they didn't know, Brother Branham talks about that in the Church Age series, how that, you know, God didn't let them know that there's going to be, would have discouraged them. It's going to be 2,000 years. You know, they, every age has believed in the imminency of his coming. And you even have disciples saying, you know, he, he, he won't tarry and he'll come. And, and he wasn't actually, by his standards, because he was going to come in the last days, plural, the last two days, the last 2,000 years. And he was going to work all down through the church ages. You remember in teaching on the book of Revelation that, that the Bible, he's all the time saying, I'm Alpha and Omega. Amen. And Brother Branham says, notice he doesn't mention the middle. Yeah. I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the ending. Now, he is in the midst of his seven lampstands. Brother Branham even, even uses it. He said, if you're standing in front of all the seven lamps, and he said, if you notice, he said when he stretches out his hands, his hand is touching Ephesus and Laodicea. Well, what about the other five in the middle? He's walking in the midst of his lampstands. Don't imagine that he's not in every age. But the difference is that in every age, while he's in every age, everything in the age is not him. Men are starting to inject theory and creed and man-made opinion, and they're starting to change the word of God. But he says, I'm alpha when it was perfect, and I'm, I'm omega because I'm going to bring it back to perfect. I'm going to bring back a token. I'm going to bring back a jubilee. I'm going to bring back an abstract, and there's going to be a people just like Paul stand at the last day and conquer this enemy once and for all. So you are the ones upon whom the ends of the world have come. You are that omega. You are that fullness. And now we find ourselves here in a most amazing hour. Unique by many standards. The, the, the church, you know, as it began to, as it began to, uh, as time just kept happening. And time, you know, the people... The people had believed. They looked for the coming of the Lord. It was going to be any time. It was going to be any minute. They met on the first day of every week just like we do. They went house to house. They had prayer meetings. They took the Lord's Supper. They had life. Yeah. Amen. Understand, they, they worked jobs. They paid taxes. They, you know, they had families just like you and I. They, they had a, some persecution going on, but, but, but we realized that that was because in many cases, they were going to have to give their lives. Whereas the battle there and during those bloody times in the ages was that they would give their lives. But Brother Branham actually says, in a way, in a certain fold, that it was almost an easy out. Yeah. Because if life just got too bad and too tough and you just wanted to go to heaven so bad, he said, you just step out and go, the Pope is the Antichrist and they would kill you. And you could just go quickly and get it over with. Just go, okay, I just can't take it anymore. I'm going to go out on the street corner and declare that Rome is the false prophet and the Pope is the false prophet and Rome is the beast system. And, and, and yeah, they might torture me the rest of the day and half tomorrow and then they'll kill me and then I'll be in glory. And Brother Branham talks about how that, that, that option is not open to us. And, he, and here we have to strive strive daily keep striving keep slogging it out and you're in a worse age than them you're in a worse age than them you you've got the convergence of noah and sodom you've got the convergence of you know you you you've got we're we're the time you're at the time where all the kings of the earth are in our 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 uh that's a crass way to say it oh i'm not gonna say it that way all, all kings of the earth are, 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 are in the bedchamber with the beast system. Amen. All the captains of the sea are in her commerce. Right. Amen? Amen. So, and, and so here we are. We're so outnumbered globally. The whole system of politics and religion and education, and social, entertainment, everything is, oh, you're swimming upstream, friends. Every day of your life, you're, you're constantly having to press, 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 press. You believe it? Right. And, and we find that, 
that now you've got the, the, the you don't, you're not, we're not dealing with a city, a little city in the plains called Sodom. Now we're dealing with Sodom multiplied globally in the highest offices. And now every system from politics to religion to news to entertainment, social values, right to the neighbors in your neighborhood. Who are no doubt nice people. But if you begin to say here in 2021, homosexuality is a mortal sin, you're going to go to hell for it. They would go, wow, aren't you? Or, wow, you shouldn't say that. Are you, that's so politically incorrect. You need to be more accepting. I'm accepting of, of God's word. I'm against no man. I'm against the devil and I'm for God. And however that makes the chips fall, the chips fall. But I'm here to defend the name of God. I'm here to defend his honor. And so we find that, that you've got the days of Noah. You know what the days of Noah were? That every man's mind over the whole world was evil continually. That means at 24-7, 365 All the population was evil. Now you've got that increased. Sodom increased. All the kings and captains of the earth increased. And it's all converged in this last day. But he's promised I'm coming back with an omega. I'm coming back, and you're, you're talking about outnumbered. You might feel outnumbered, friends. You're, 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 you know, when the early church, when they didn't see it happening, it looked to them like nothing's happening. And so much that the apostles have to start preaching. Hey, hey, come on. Earnestly contend for the faith. Come on, y'all. We need to earn it. Stop slipping. You're starting to slip. You know, earnestly contend for the faith. Can you imagine what pastors had to put up with when all the last, when the last disciples and apostles were gone? And those grievous wolves started coming in. Can you imagine loyal pastors pounding it away in the pulpit? Come on, saints. You know, that's not what Paul taught us. Come on, friends. That's not what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. You got to have a real new birth. And, and slowly and, and slowly and slowly, you know, that beast system took it all over. And you're here now in Satan's Eden. He's the God of this age. It's overspread the whole world. The convergence of every possible bad thing that could ever happen is now upon us you better have a battle plan you better be ready you better have some armor on hallelujah amen Amen. because this is where we have arrived we find that you know we we can feel like and I gotta close I'm trying to close in seven minutes what brother Diggs says don't get scared I'm fixing to close and then he'll preach another hour (laughs) I'm not going to do that. So we, we can find that it's almost as if there's been this long, very long, um, not a pause, but a really long space of time, many decades, since a prophet opens the seals, yeah. 1963 on Penn Street, here in a little podunk town, still pretty much that, and, and, and one of the greatest events, one of the greatest Bible events that was, that was ever going to happen for God's family, the opening of the seven seals, 2,000 years in the making, ever since the church fell away and Christ has to sit back down, seals the word up, intercedes on behalf of ignorance for seven church ages, comes to the end, and now he's going to break it open. And he's going to bring back, the, he's going to make the mighty God, it's going to be unveiled. Amen? Amen. And when he unveils, when, when he has the unveiling of God, suddenly we realize, oh wow, we already knew he wasn't three, but now we, we realize why the oneness were wrong. Because now we see his body is included. We see that his body is included. Brother Brown talks about how that when you're born in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, You're brought into the very deity of Jesus Christ. That you're part of God's Godhead. This is his economy. This is the kingdom he's been trying to build. And it looks like, wow, there's been such a long time. 
you know, that it, 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 it seems like from the time of the shout, you know, to the time of when the trumpet sounds and we're going to have a resurrection of the saints. And, you know, it just seems like a, a lot of things have had to happen. And here we're, we're still here, but it's been necessary. First of all, all those names had to be called. We, we can't leave here without that last name on the Lamb's book of life. Amen? Amen? Amen. I mean, the bride has been, has, been, has been being fit to the word, not the other way around. The word was never going to change. The bride had to be fit to it. She had to be, she had to grow across these decades. The bride has had to grow into her position as the final voice to the final age. And you know something, let me, just, let me just throw this out here. This might seem like a, almost like a, an awkward elephant in the room, but I'm just going to say it the way it feels on my heart. You know, all these decades, since even before Prophet left, we had people, you know, having other little camps and other little ideas, even when a Prophet was there. And a Prophet's got to go take trips and rebuke them and change them and calm them down. And, you know, and he keeps calling them. He said, they're my children, you know. And, and you had men misunderstanding who the prophet was, what the word was, what it was to do. They misunderstood the seals. They misunderstood marriage and divorce. They, they're doing things wrong, and Brother Branham's having to try to fix it. And, and they're saying, oh, mercy's over. Brother Branham, should we quit our jobs? Or should, should, we still, should we still work? And Brother Branham said, well, the only one that will work is a Christian man, of course. He said, good grief, y'all don't. Have I not? Brother Branham even felt like res- he was responsible. He said, my goodness, how could you come up with that? Of course there's still mercy. Of course you should still keep your jobs. Brother Branham, should we? He's getting letters and getting phone calls. Brother Branham, should we meet under under the bridge? What? Yeah, I heard. I heard. Here's a man in his yard. We heard the the rapture was happening. And Brother Branham said, sir, you, you, you got me confused. I don't know what you're talking about. But yet we find that God has family members sometimes who get a little confused. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Those disciples all ran for the hills in the Garden of Gethsemane. They all lost their mind. Yeah. It took a little while for them to come back around. And Peter thought he had, he had sealed his doom. I, I, I love that statement. I heard some years ago, Brother Paul LaFontaine made, he's talking about those disciples, you know, fled and, and, and lost their mind and then had to come back around. He said, you know something, friends? Let's just admit this. It said, this thing ain't over yet. Come on, could we have that attitude? This thing ain't over yet. Rather than condemning the rest of the world who maybe don't agree with it exactly like us, why don't we make our calling and election sure, put on the whole armor, stay in prayer, and let's just be the right example. Amen? Amen? I, don't, I don't believe. In fact, is I, I know for sure there, there are groups within the message that love this message, love God's prophet, and and, and I don't exactly agree with their position. They don't exactly agree with mine. But you know, get around them sometime. Talk to them. You know what you'll find out? They love this message as much as you do. They love a prophet as much as you do. They, in fact, as they think you don't love it quite enough. And, and, and I just say, okay, there's this group and there's that group. And I understand we're going to have fanaticism. My point is that Jesus, you know, it, I, I, that's what I love, that scene. I, I play it over and over where Jesus is standing there to his fishermen in, 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 the, uh, in, in that uh, chosen, one of the greatest, most epic Jesus stories, bar none running away. The uh, second next competitor is miles behind it. The greatest Jesus story I've ever encountered. And he's standing there and he's, made, he's filled up their boat to where it's sinking with fish and Peter's falling on his knees and go away from me, I'm a sinful man. And Jesus invites him to follow him. A, a sinful man, a failure. And Jesus says, follow me. Yeah. And later when he calls Matthew, they can't believe it. Do you understand what he, this guy's a traitor. He's taxing us and cheating us. He works for Rome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yet this is, and Jesus tells him, he says, he says, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Yeah. Fishers of men. And, and he makes this statement. He says, I want you to go. And he says, I want you to bring all kinds in. Bring, go, go, to, go to everything. Yeah. Catch everything you can. And he, he says, I'll separate them later. 
I just about start screaming every time he says that. Says, go catch them. Go find them. Bring them in. Get all kinds. I'll separate them later. I don't need you to do it. I just need you to catch them. I'll send forth my angels. And that's the ministry of the last day. But we're not separating them based on our theory. We're just preaching the word of God. And the word of God, people who can't take it, run away from it. But I'm here to tell you something, friends. We got we might be splintered here and splintered there and this group here and this group there. But I'm here to tell you, it's not going to be a misunderstood doctrine that's going to... You're never going to keep somebody whose name is on the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't care what the condition of their life is or the condition of their teaching is. They're going to be there. There's not going to be one empty chair at the marriage supper of the Lamb. How about we just have the love of God and just keep preaching it and keep living it and keep loving and keep letting God sort out his family. This is our battle plan. The king is coming. We need to be an array. We need to be ready. We need to choose. Who am I in the David story? Who am I? Choose, friends. Choose who you want to be. Are you going to be the backslid son of God in the tent? The king, you're going to be the backslid preacher who ain't got enough courage to put his armor on anymore? You're going to be the the family who saw the miracles of God and then try to to, uh, turn around and attack it? You're going to be Goliath? You're going to be the army? I got one man I want to be like, David. There's an anointing came on David. David prophesied when he got out in that field. Now, catch it. He didn't, he didn't prophesy until he went to war. And when he went to war and actually armed himself with his slingshot, the, the, the war tribu- the, you know, the, 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 the war room, we've already figured it out. The king wants me to go in his armor. I ain't going to do it. Take my own. Okay, go. I've already went past my brothers. I don't care what they say. I know everybody's afraid, but I'm going to go face him. He gets five smooth stones, takes his sling, and heads to to the field of battle. And when that giant makes his boast against David, an anointing falls on David, and David starts prophesying. Now, there's two prophecies going forward, one one from Christ and one from Antichrist. And they're both pretty much saying the same thing. I'm going to take your head off and feed it to the fowls of the air. And David said, you know, it's not that David had bigger, more brave sounding words than Goliath. But David had a secret. And here's what Goliath was missing. This cost him his life. David said, your boast is because of your shield and sword. You're coming at me with your shield and your sword and your spear. But I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord. That's the difference, Goliath. I'm not, I got a slingshot. I'm not even trusting in the slingshot. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord God. That's, that was the difference. And that made David victorious and Goliath got a, 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 say a rude awakening. He went to sleep, never woke up. (laughs) That's what it takes, friends. That's what it takes. It doesn't matter. I, I understand how the devil can come into our lives, disrupt our home, challenge you, challenge you for your family. I had a, a wonderful uh, conversation. A sister sent me, and just like any good mommy would be, praying for her children. Yeah. Pray, I tell you, we need more mommies like that. Praying, and it's, it's the burden of her heart that all of her kids make it. I can tell you that was Sister Debbie's burden. Nothing mattered, didn't matter, as long as all of her kids made it in. And, and mother's praying that prayer. And, and, and she gave me a testimony. Here, here I had a testimony of getting up at four. She says, she says to me, she says, she says, I woke up at three in the morning. She said, and here I am. And she said, and so I put a tape on. And she said, and, 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 and I'm just hitting some highlights. And she said, and as the tape is playing, she said, I drifted off. And she said, I, I went into a deep sleep. And she said, and I've had this happen so many times where I'm studying a thought or I got a need or something I'm praying about or some kind of situation I'm facing and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a tape playing and I'll go in my office maybe mid-afternoon, take a 10-minute power nap, 15-minute power nap 
And sure as anything, you can't believe how many times it's happened. I'll literally come awake hearing the, the statement I needed. Not even knowing it's on that tape. And suddenly just wake up and hear him say something. And this sister saying to me, it's the most amazing thing. She says, I, I drifted back off. I went into a deep sleep. And she said, I came awake. And as I came awake, she said, I heard these words. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou and thy house shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. It was God answering a mother's heart who's concerned and praying for her children. And Brother Branham, she sent me the whole quote. Brother Branham says, if you can believe for yourself, you can believe for your house also. Have enough faith in God to believe for yourself, then believe for your children also. Come on, friends. Let's believe it. Hallelujah. That same faith will save your children that saved you. If you just keep praying, amen, this is your armor. If you just, God will answer prayer. Here's two beautiful prophet words. Ready? Ready? Don't worry. (laughs) Don't worry. What should I do? Just ask him. And believe it and get it anchored in your heart and just keep moving on. That's the way it's done. The world's got every kind of gizmo and every kind of thing say, oh, that's the way it's done. Well, that's whatever you're doing, I don't even care about. I want my family saved. I want my children saved. I want my grandchildren saved. I want your children and grandchildren saved. Hallelujah, what am I doing? I'm praying, I'm believing, I'm going forward. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. The king is coming. Hallelujah, friends, we have arrived at this hour to greet his majesty in the air. And I intend to greet him with all my loved ones. I intend to to take a church and say, Father, here they are. They were always yours. They were never mine. Oh, my. That's what we need, friends. Prayer. Put on the whole armor. This is our battle plan. I've decided who I want to be in the story. Maybe we we all need a 3 a.m. experience. Hallelujah, friends. I just say, Lord, let it be me. Why don't you stand with me? Amen. I said I'd quit in seven. I quit in, I went seven minutes past that. So, well, double sevens, that's a good number. Come on back, Bradley. Bring me, bring your team and Brother Brad and let's sing. Amen. We're going to take up prayer request. And I make sure I don't have any. I always look one last time and then if there's anything, I'll get back to my office and see one that I missed that came in too late. Here's one request. Let's remember. Um, which, what is this, Brad? The Smeaton. Oh, yeah. His dad passed away, didn't he? Yeah, Brother Bo Smeaton. Oh, is his father-in-law? Okay. Brother Bo, Bo Smeaton's father-in-law passed away. Uh, so we want to pray for Brother Bo Smeaton and the whole family. I let him know today. It's one of the things I saw when I was checking Messenger and and saw that and so just told him we'd be praying for him. And um, I had also a request uh, from Brother Kevin, unspoken prayer request. So we want to be remembering that. I don't see any others. I'm going to look one more place. I've been reminding everyone just to Send it to me uh, early so that I have it. I appreciated Brother Kevin doing exactly that. So I'm having some connection issues. I don't really know why. I hope I'm not going to miss something because of that. Amen. Amen. While I'm looking at this, let's sing, brother. Let's sing whatever's on your heart.
surgery yet or is that still coming it's this Friday in two days right okay your dad was telling me about that we got the unspoken request from brother Kevin and we're just praying also can I also ask you to pray for brother Mike Oltek brother Mike caught COVID and of course he's well into his 70s and he recovered from it that was uh, actually recovered from it weeks ago but he told me that he just is having such a hard time getting over the after effects a lot of weakness a lot of coughing you can't seem to beat it and so I told him that we would just ask the Lord how about a special prayer for brother Mike Altec a real champion a real general real warrior of the faith we want to see the Lord touch him so that request then uh, for for Rhett um, who's having this major major surgery on his leg on Friday and I was talking to brother Donald and we were, he had, he had wrote me to ask me about uh, praying also. And I told him that I would do that and that we would, you know, uh, the, 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 the call in that I'm on. Those, I've got those brothers praying for it, Brother Travis. Those brothers all over from here to the West Coast and up into Canada every day praying for Rhett. And I, and I said, you give him a message, Brother Donald. And here's what I said. Let Rhett know that ministers around the world are praying for him specifically. And I have posted his accident and recovery to global ministry chats that I'm involved with. Let him know that as a church, we love him and we're praying for him. Amen. Amen. I want to see the Lord get a hold of his heart. Amen. Amen. How, I mean, I'd like to have two Travises in here. Amen. Amen. Every church needs at least one. I'd like to have two. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing it again. It, it is well, oh, with my soul, oh, it is well, it is well with my soul. Let's go to the Lord now, Father. It is well, Lord. Here we are in Satan's Eden, but it is well with my soul. Lord, the world's filled with sin, overran, oh God. Sodom conditions, the days of Noah, all the merchants and kings of the earth. Father, in in, in a in a complete agreement with the beast system. And here's this little bride scattered thin around the world, believing your word. Lord, I want you to know that this song, when we sing it is well, we mean it. It is well. The devil fights, it's well with my soul. Symptoms of sickness come, it is well with my soul. The devil battles my children, it is well with my soul. The devil, I need to have this need in my life, it is well with my soul. Doesn't matter what the enemy does, Lord. Our hope is in you, Father. I I look to the hills, as David said, from whence cometh my help. Lord, what a confidence we can have. We know, Father, where our help comes from. We have understood in this day, Lord, that you are with us. You are among your bride. Your word is here, opened up and revealed, and is now being 
a, a, a lived out experience in the lives of the people. I pray for these needs, Father. I pray that the word tonight would encourage hearts for those people who, who, who seem to have more problems than they have answers. May they just realize they didn't even become a Christian because they decided to. They did because God decided to. They're a believer because God decided they would be. Hallelujah. They have victory because God has decided. We're going to make a rapture because God has decided. My family is secure because God has given me a promise. And I'm believing it. If he didn't want me to believe that promise, he shouldn't have gave it. Because I'm going to hold on to it. I'm never going to surrender it. Father, I pray for these needs. The need Brother Kevin has, unspoken. You see it, Father. I pray you'll deal and speak to your son's heart, Lord. Give him, Lord, the great answer that he is needing from you. Grant it, Lord. We pray for Rhett. Father, there's been so many testimonies given to him and so much prayer and his mom and dad and his brother, Father. And, and not only Brother Travis, his brother, but Lord Travis claiming his whole family. And we're claiming him with him, Lord. We're believing that you move in the supernatural. We want to equip ourselves. We want to put on the whole armor of God. We want to march forward. I want to identify myself with David. Not interested in identifying with the, the, the people who are afraid. I'm not interested in identifying myself with Goliath's nonsense. I want to identify with David. David was a believer, and I'm a believer. So we commit these things to you, Master, believing that you will do them, believing that we'll see it. Lord, you see the surgery Rhett's facing. Father, I pray Kevin and Sarah got a trip to back here. I pray you keep them safe. Bring them, bring them safely home. Father, there's other families out still traveling who've been gone over the weekend and still out, and I'm praying for their safe return as well. We commit these needs to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. You love him, friends. Isn't it good to be a Christian? Hallelujah. I want to just make a quick announcement before we let you go. Um, so we've, I sent out a, a, a plan to have um, on Valentine's Sunday. It falls on a Sunday, and I thought, what better time? I've had a lot of requests um, to have some kind of some one-on-one, -on -one, you know, not behind a pulpit teaching a class, but kind of in a casual environment to, you know, talk about married couples and marriage and the principles of, of being a husband, principles of leading a family, the relationship between husbands and wives. And so we decided to, uh, no better time than the present, Brother Mike and Sister Wanda, uh, who have a dynamite place for it, have opened up, even on short notice, uh, their home this Sunday afternoon. And I sent that announcement out. I'm sure you got it. It went into the WhatsApp. Uh, it went out to the entire church for um, couples married or, or in courtship. And we're going to just have a casual atmosphere of coffee and desserts. Be after you've had your lunch. We've long been out of church. We've had fellowship. You've had your lunch. We've had fellowship. Then we're going to go and have a nice little get together, kind of a little sweethearts get together and uh, have some fellowship and talk about the things of God. Now, all sounds great, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> I've had one RSVP, one couple, out of the entire assembly. Now, Brother Matt, he'll be out of town. Brother JD, I think, will be gone again. You're ministering somewhere off this weekend. Hey, Jason. And so, um, and maybe some others are out of town. And so, if it's, if it's let me say it this way, <clears throat> if it's a scheduling issue, uh, no problem for me to push it back a week. You know, that, that would give Matt time to get back, J.D. time to get back. Uh, I know there's some saints in Florida. Maybe they can't do it this weekend. I don't know. I'm just simply saying, if it's a scheduling issue, then please let me know, and I'm happy to push it back a week. If it's not a scheduling issue and you just don't want to come, fine. Great. I'm, we'll just go forth and have it for whoever wants to come. I promise you that'll be perfectly okay because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do them again. I'm not just going to do, it's not going to be one and done. We want to start doing some more things we want to start doing that and things like that. So uh, I'm happy to do it either way, but I sure would like to have some communication from the assembly. We ask RSVP uh, for a reason, and uh, we need that more, for more than just figuring out how much dessert to have. Amen?
All right. So it, 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 like I say, be clear, if it's a scheduling issue and enough people say, I'd love to do it, but we're going to be out of town, then I'll just reschedule it and push it back a weekend. Uh, but if it's just, uh, you know, there's only a couple that want to come, then we'll just go with a couple and we will have a good time. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless your friends. Let's bow our heads and I'll let you be dismissed in prayer. Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening that we've had. Thank you for your word. Lord, I sure was depending on you. And you, as always, you never fail. You never let us down, Lord. You always come and give us what we need. Wow, you are amazing. So I, I, the devil fighting me so hard, Lord. But you just stepped right around him as if he didn't even matter. Lord, I'm grateful for that. He doesn't matter, Lord. He can't stop your word. He can't stop you. Father, he attacks the vessels that carry the word, but he can't stop the word. When you're determined to do something, Lord, and there's no power in heaven or earth that can stop you. And if you're determined something's not going to happen, it don't matter what you do, you're not going to make it happen. So, Lord, I like it that way because that leaves you in complete control, and that's the way I feel to say this. I sleep safe at night knowing you're in control. So I give you these people and all those listening and streaming. Lord, we give them into your care in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. You can be dismissed. We'll see you the weekend. God bless you. But Lord, tears for thee, for thy coming we wait. The sky, not the grave, is our goal. my